you're listening to the Powerhouse Podcast with your host, Abe Cortez. On this episode, Abe has a telephone conversation with a Latino family who is very concerned about the representations of Latinos in the state of Washington. Now, let's listen in to the conversation. Hey, welcome to the Powerhouse Podcast. This is your amigo, Abe Cortez. Kick it live for the one and two because the three and four went outside the door. And this is where we talk about issues, concerns, and images, the stuff that's going on, whether it's in the news, in your community, down the street, or around by your Thea's house, going on in the Chicano Latino community. And I'm here with the one and only Christopher and Amalia. Go ahead and introduce yourself, man. And these are members of LULAC. They're any members of League of United Latin American Citizens, Seattle Tacoma Chapter, and they're also community leaders that have been working in the community for a long time. Introduce yourself. Go ahead. Hey, thanks, Abe. Um, my name is uh, Christopher Escobedo, like you said, uh, senior, because I have a junior. Uh, we got four kids, you know, me and my wife, doing a little bit of, like you said, a lot of things for the community this past two years, man. We've really been involved uh, going to the city council meetings and things like that. And I mean, we really see that we all need to be involved because our voice is just not being heard. You know what I mean? And uh, here's my wife. Go ahead, Amalia. Hello, my name is Amelia Escobedo. And like my husband said, you know, we're out here trying to fight for our community. We need our voices to be heard. We need a seat at the table. You know, we need to be out there talking about how the education is affecting our children. We have four kids in the school system. And just them being in the school system, they've uh, dealt with racism. Not only that, they've dealt with bullying from teachers. I mean, so how are we going to get this word out to let people know that this is happening in our communities? So that's pretty much why we're out here trying to spread the word, get the hand to hand it together, you know, just trying to spread love and awareness. Okay, really, am I the way you're on the phone? Because I always get, like to give people credit, but can you kind of let them know politically? You ran for office. You've been on different boards. I know Christopher tells me about the board. So let the people know that way because at the same time, when somebody sees somebody that looks like them and sounds like them doing stuff, it's easier for them to get motivated. So tell us about your experience. I mean, because I know you've been out here, You, other than serving your country, thanks for uh, being part of the Army and all that, you actually ran for office. Yeah, I was a soldier. Uh, I was attached to the first Special Forces group here at JBLM. I served eight years. Uh, what I ha- what I did run for is Lakewood City Council uh, position two. I ran and I ran to a lot of things. So not only do we have people set in place to stop us from succeeding, we don't even have people to, in place to help us succeed. So we need people like A, we need people like Christopher, we need people like me, we need people like you that are ready to stand up and have that voice heard. Uh, just running, like, I didn't really have any support from anybody. So I had to rely on my husband and people that were close to me, maybe a few friends, like a handful. And that's all I had. So bringing the Latino community together is important. How do we do that? We're going to have to go hit up the streets. We're going to have to go door to door. We're going to have to go to the colleges and say, hey, what's up? Like, what's going on in your community? You know, like here in Lakewood, we have a lot of gentrification going on. We have people in place that have been there for already 10, 12 years that are doing the same thing. And we need change. And that's why, yeah, that's why I ran. And that's why I'm here. Yeah, man, I'm 40 years old, man. So... You know, I'm not old, but I'm not young either. So, you know, about five years ago, you know, I got the little the political bug, you know, uh, Mr. Trompeta, you know, when it was in office and all kind of heck went loose, you know, and man, we see all the people, man. We saw people crying every day on on the news, on, on live, you know, people getting taken from their families. I mean, we witnessed it, bro. So we, we created a nonprofit called Rise Against Racism. You know, just to try to get the word out there, you know, not everybody knows what's going on sometimes. People are in their little bubbles. So, I mean, we started doing that. And then I created a business. I'm a personal trainer. And we created a little personal training business. But then, you know, COVID hit. Of course, it hit everybody. So, you know, it hit me pretty good. So, you know, I 
pretty much that business went down. And now, you know, I'm sitting at uh back at Amazon, you know, just trying to work like everybody else, just trying to make a living. Oh yeah, once COVID hit, it's wiped out fifty percent of society. And oh yeah, you can't even go in the grocery stores and get get what you wanted anymore because you know there's a shortage of trucking. I mean, it's really hit our economy real bad. But before I forget, I gotta let the I gotta let the people know about something that's going on because this airs on Spotify, our Heart Radio. There's a lot of places we're gonna. I want to invite the public, especially the Chicano Latinos, the Chicanos. We're going to be doing a LULAC, Seattle Tacoma LULAC town hall meeting. And this is going to be Saturday, March 12th at the East Side Neighborhood Center, which is located off of 56 in Portland Avenue, right on the corner, right there. Real nice building. Uh, we're going to have guest speaker, Carlos Ortiz, filmmaker, uh, mayor mayor of uh, Burien, Jimmy Mata. Uh, we're going to have Dr. Benel Baca, who's the one who saved Sense of the Latino and the He's the chair of the Commission on Hispanic Affairs. And last but not least, we're going to have two lawyers talking about a lawsuit that they won in Yakima about voter suppression, voting rights. Um, the one and only Molly Matter and Lupe Gamboa attorneys. Lupe Gamboa, by the way, was a farm worker as a kid, the civil rights leader. I mean, I remember him 20, 20 years ago when a bunch of people from the community went and stormed the, the Capitol and were kind of semi-protested. And he looked at me, he goes, keep doing what you're doing. You know, back then I was a lot younger. And I, I said, man, it's proud to even be around you, man. I mean, you're a leader out here. So it'll be good to see you. You're going to have organizations like that's already been approved, sponsoring this thing, you know, buying some extra things that's needed. Consejo, Centro Latino, Armijo Law Office. And then I've, I've had different people from the community that say they want to come out and volunteer. So the reason th this is going on is not only talk about issues, but we need to figure out a way we, we can all get together. And like Christopher said, bailes, which means dances in Spanish. So I just had to throw that in there because I want to, if you're listening to this, before not forget, Saturday, March 12th, Eastside Community Center get there at 5 o'clock and ends at 8. And you'll hear, you'll have culture, food, dance, music, and, and some great speakers. And along with some resources from the community that are going to be there with a booth, you know. And see, and this is one of the big reasons that we joined LULAC, you know, and it's been exciting for us, you know, to actually see Latinos organizing together, you know what I mean, and getting together and trying to get the word out to everybody else who doesn't got the word. You know, this is a big deal for us, man. Definitely. And I will say, I will say this, especially you're a lot younger than me, Chris, for you and your wife, and you guys look younger than you are anyway. Pretty incredible. But you're 40, but you look like you're 30. It's a pleasure, man. Without people like you coming on board, I mean, eventually, you know, who knows how, when, how long I'll be here, and how long other people would look like. And to be quite honest with you, I'll say this now. If you're a young person out there in high school, we can do a LULAC Youth Council. Because I kind of think that we need – LULAC is an old organization. We've been around – LULAC came and started in Texas 80-plus years ago. So some of the people that started it are still around. So oh, I, yeah. I just think it's going to – we need people like you, Christopher, who are younger. Oh, yeah, man. I remember the first time I witnessed it, brother. Um, we was wearing Mexican flags, and um, the, the school made it, like, you know, against the rules. Well, Lulac showed up, you know, saying suited up and booted up, and they came in there, you know, and it just felt good just to see them. You oh, know? that was in uh, Abilene. Yeah, man, it was crazy, man. It was yeah, amazing. I will say, as a kid, man, I've seen some discrimination going on, and when you see these guys in these nice vehicles, black Vinca Continentals or Cadillac, show up in <laughs> suit, they didn't look like they were smiling. Uh, the principals and whoever at that school were like, "Oh, Lulac's here, we're in trouble." I said, why are you in trouble, sir? They go, no, those are all lawyers. Yep, exactly. Those are business people. Those aren't people like you guys. So what do you mean like you guys? They go, you guys, no offense, but poor kids. They aren't. I said, well, they look like me. They go, yeah, that's the problem. So I never, I, it was, it was, I felt so joyful to see an authority figure to somebody that was known to set these people straight because I'll say this right now, and I, I sound like a broken record, but I got to say it. 
if you grew up in the state of Texas, there's no way that you did not experience discrimination. I mean, that's just that was part of growing up there, man. Oh yeah, man. We went no around it. Yeah, man. Got, when you go to different towns to play football games, you'd have signs fill up to say, you know, no people allowed. You know, no people of color allowed. Still. Oh yeah. And, it was crazy, man, but it was it was it wasn't that bad in my hometown, Abilene, Texas. You know, thankfully, yeah. we had a lot of uh, of Chicanos there. But man, yeah, West Texas, yeah. So and I want to say for like the students and stuff like that, like don't feel like you don't bring anything to look like. Like everybody has something they're good at. Some people are good at technology. Some people are good at production. Some people are good at you know talking. You know, people skills. So don't feel like that's going to keep you from joining LULAC. Come out and join us, man. If we can educate you and rise you up so you can be our leaders in the future, that's what we want. So please come out and join LULAC. Join us uh, at the party. Come out, get some food, you know, dance. We're going to have fun and, you know, have fun, get educated, and get to know everybody in our communities. And if you're listening to this, like Amalia said, we're going to be doing uh, get-togethers, and we're going to be getting together at this place called Bolero's Bowling Alley, uh, located at 3852 Silicon Boulevard, right there in Lakewood. Uh, actually, we're going to be getting together there Saturday, February the 5th, from 6.30 on. The reason I picked that place, it's real laid back. A lot of people don't know about it, and the owner's a real cool community guy. I did a car show there last summer, and he's, he went out of his way to, to, you know, to just welcome us and I asked him, you don't mind a bunch of Chicanos and African-Americans? He goes, absolutely not, man. I don't look at that. I was in the military. You know, so he he fought wars with other people of color, and, you know, he, they became strong. So I will say that we do have our allies within the white community, too, you know. Oh, yeah, you got to, man. That's the, I, I that's gotta the say, important part. Growing up as a kid, I thought, if somebody looks and sounds like me, they're cool, but that ain't automatic, man, honestly. No, you gotta, you gotta, you know, feel the heart out, like you know, the insides. No, because they're, sometimes I hate to say it, but with the Chicanos and Mexican Americans, you have this theory called the crab theory. One crab's trying to, you got a bunch of crabs in a in a bucket or a pail, and they're trying to get out, and the other ones, one sees one getting out, the other one pulls the other one down. Instead yep, of helping one another, you can climb out together. One, one sees one going up, he's gonna pull them down. You know? Yeah, so I was telling my wife, man, what if you had that king crab on top? And he said, hey, I need all my leaders to line up and make a line, and let's get all these people out of here. Let's make a ladder. The leaders, yes. you see, the leaders got to make the ladder. So we yes. got to get this organized, man. Yeah, so while we're at it, I want to welcome everybody. This is Saturday, February 5th, Bolero's, the back bar, located at 3852 Silicon Boulevard, Lakewood, Washington. If you need to put a zip code, it's 98499. We're going to start at 630. What is it going to be? A LULAC social right there, Saturday, February 5th, Bolero. I can't wait to say to be able to say that and say, Byland, LULAC, Byland. I know, boy. Man, you don't even understand, man. We need it. You know? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm working, I'm working on some stuff right now. Because of COVID, though, that puts a wrench in them. Where before, you could just... Set stuff up, sit down, and get it going. But man, this COVID thing is just a lot of a lot of paranoid people, which I can't I can't blame them. They've gone places, and the next thing you know, they go home, and two days later they got COVID. Hey, we can do some outside concerts to be safer, you know. Oh yeah, I think out there so. at the park, it's gonna start getting warm. You know, we get only four months of warm sun, so we got to take advantage. So while we're at it, man, I mean, if you don't mind speaking on this, Christopher. Is there anything within within the news or controversy that's just been like digging at you that that you want to kind of speak on, man? That you know that you see it all the time and you're like, man, this ain't right, man. Oh yeah, man. I mean, you know, I mean, thankfully uh, when I see Lulac, they're always talking about.